The movie opens with a French family celebrating Christmas. The family consists of the parents, Edmund and Solange, their daughter Corinne, and their son-in-law Patrick. Dinner isn't going so well, because Corinne invited her lonely boss, Valerie, to their celebration. Valerie is recently divorced after her ex left her for a younger woman. She's bitter, depressed, and venting to the family about her unhappiness. They are all sick of her lamentations, so they decide to tell her the story of Corinne's sister and Edmund's stepdaughter, Isabel. Corinne and Solange explain that there's a curse in the family, in which all first marriages are a failure. Both Corinne and Solange were married before their current husbands, and the relationships all failed in some way or another. They are okay with it, because their second relationships are way better than their first. Isabel tried to escape the curse, but in the end, it caught up to her. It all starts with Isabel and her long-term boyfriend, Pierre. Isabel is a gorgeous woman, and Pierre is a handsome man. They have a seemingly perfect relationship. Isabel met Pierre when she was in college. It was love at first sight. After they started dating, they were thick as thieves. After college, they opened their own dentist's office and did everything together. There was no Isabel without Pierre. Knowing about her family's curse, Isabel decided to not marry Pierre. As they got older, though, Isabel started thinking about having a baby. According to Pierre's family's tradition, he couldn't have a kid without being married first. With no way out, Isabel accepts to marry Pierre, but rather, she has to solve her family's curse. Corinne has a great idea to help her out. Isabel would go to Denmark to get married to a random man she met, and get divorced on the same day. The plan seems great. Isabel is anxious about getting it out of the way, so she can marry Pierre with no issues. After lying to him about a trip she's going to do with Corinne, she goes to Denmark. Since it's a one-day trip, she doesn't have any luggage. Only some winter clothes that her sister lent her. On the plane, she meets an annoying man named Jean. He is short, not handsome, and he can't stop talking to her. He talks about his job, his family, and his trip, and all Isabel wants is for him to shut it down. When she's rude to him, Jean is offended and disheartened. Isabel is beautiful, and he's nervous to be so close to her. When they arrive in Denmark, Isabel finds out that the man she's supposed to marry is a no-show. She desperately calls Corinne, informing her that the plan didn't work out, and she would go back home. Corinne insists she finds another man, and Isabel has an idea. She watches Jean waiting to board a plane to go to Kenya, and remembers what he said about falling in love. During his monologue on the aircraft, Jean told Isabel that he wants to get married right away when he falls in love. Isabel believes she can use Jean's eagerness and naivety to her advantage. With her mind made up, it's time to seduce a clueless Jean. Isabel spends a lot of money on a business ticket to Kenya, but Jean is in economy class. He's next to her when she informs the attendant that she wants to exchange her business ticket for an economy one. She plans to sit next to Jean. She's shocked when he exchanges his economy ticket for her business one. That's the first sign that her plan won't work. Jean is having a blast in business class. Before the plane takes off, Isabel approaches Jean to flirt with him, but he's completely clueless. He believes she's only being nice to him. It's only when Isabel is leaving, and she kisses him very close to his mouth, that he realizes that she might be flirting with him. In the meantime, Pierre arrives at Corinne's house, and she has to quickly hide from him. He has no idea his girlfriend is about to marry a random person. In Kenya, Isabel has no extra clothes or a hotel reservation. She tries going after Jean, but he takes a bus and disappears. Isabel finds him again at a resort, and accidentally falls into a swimming pool. She's frustrated with her bad luck, but determined to marry Jean. As she waits to do her check-in, Jean shows up right next to her. She pretends it's a huge coincidence that they met again, and Jean believes her. When she finds out that he won't be staying at the resort, she quickly pretends that she'll be staying at his hotel. The hotel he chooses is dingy and old. With no luggage, Isabel steals a random suitcase, though it only has male clothing. Pierre calls her, and she has to lie to him about her location. Isabel is having the worst day ever. She's exhausted, and the last thing she wants is to interact with Jean. She finds him annoying and boring. Not only that, but she's in a different country, totally unprepared. It's her worst nightmare. After talking to Pierre, Isabel and Jean go around the city. She asks him to come with her to a clothing store, and wears a skimpy dress that barely hides anything. It's the perfect opportunity for her to seduce Jean. She asks for his help, and when he enters the changing room, he almost passes out at seeing her half He tries to pretend he's used to beautiful women walking around half but he's awkward. Isabel would never wear a dress like that, so it's all a game for her to gain his trust. Jean falls for her act, thinking that she's really interested in him. Isabel follows him everywhere. She eats the local food and hates it, all while Jean talks about himself nonstop. She learns he's a tourist guide and writer in his free time. He wrote a children's book that he has yet to publish. Jean doesn't notice her grimacing and rolling her eyes whenever he says something absurd. After lunch, Isabel invites him to go to the church with her. There, she utterly embarrasses herself by declaring her love for him and proposing. She's certain Jean will say yes, but he runs away from her, thinking she's mad. Their next stop is in the desert. Jean drives them there. Isabel is wholly unprepared for their desert hike, with her summer dress and sandals. Still, she's determined to conquer Jean no matter what. 
or where he takes her. They stop at a place with a beautiful view of the mountains. For the first time since her trip, Isabel is impressed by the beauty. Unbeknownst to them, though, a lion is resting right behind them. Isabel is the first to notice it, and freaks out. Jean stops her from running, and they stand motionless while the lion advances. The lion sniffs the two of them and leaves. It's a crazy adventure, and the adrenaline coursing through Isabel's veins makes her feel great. She laughs out loud after the lion leaves, pointing out that Jean was scared. He promises he wasn't, but then he notices the wet patch on his pants. He was so scared he peed himself. Before they can go back to the car, they hear a sound that resembles a lion roaring. Jean reassures her that it's the engine of a car, and they soon find out it's their car being stolen. Stuck in the middle of the desert, with no means of communication, Isabel feels like passing away. She can't believe she's doing all this for a wedding. They walk under the blistering heat, until they find a place to hide. Jean talks the whole way. Isabel is tired, hungry, and thirsty. The only thing she wants is her comfortable bed at home and Pierre. The night falls, and it's cold. Jean offers his jacket to Isabel, surprising her with his chivalry. They watch the evening sky in silent contemplation. Despite all the pain and suffering of walking through a desert with no preparation, Isabel finds the place mesmerizing. She points out the stars and constellations to Jean, something that surprises him. She knows their names, because her father was an astronomer, and before he passed away, he taught her everything about the universe. He even promised to take her to the moon once. Jean finds her story touching. He hugs her as she reminisces about her father, and she accepts his comfort. A group of natives of the desert approach them out of nowhere, scaring Isabel so much that she bumps her head into a rock and passes out. The following day, she wakes up alone in a cabin. Jean is nowhere to be seen. Soon she finds out that they took her to the tribe, and there's a celebration happening. Jean is right in the middle, dancing and having fun. It's astounding to Isabel how charismatic he is. He can make friends easily anywhere he goes. When Jean sees her, he informs her that he found a ride for her. A man on a bike shows up to take her to the city. But she gives up going after learning Jean will stay for a wedding. Isabel believes she can marry Jean by following the tribe's traditions. She tricks him into marrying her, and he believes she's in love with him. At last, Isabel is a married woman. The issue is that there's no way for her to divorce him. She believes that because it was a traditional tribe wedding, she doesn't need to worry about the fallout. Karine is there to take her home, and Jean follows. He still thinks Isabel is his beloved wife, and instead of telling him the truth, she pretends she is. Karine is shocked that she managed to marry someone, but Isabel promises her that it wasn't a real wedding. When they finally separate, Isabel lies to Jean that she will call him, without even giving him her phone number. She feels bad, especially when she sees Pierre again. When she arrives home, she decides to tell the truth to Pierre. He believes she's pregnant, and freaks out about it, a reaction that confuses and hurts Isabel. She was sure he wanted kids as much as she did, but now she isn't as sure. She forgets about Jean and goes back to her routine. Pierre isn't suspicious of her at all. He only wants to get married to her, as they planned. A few days later, he proposes to her officially, and Isabel happily agrees. One day, while they are bowling with her sister and brother-in-law, Corinne warns her that Jean is there. Isabel freaks out. She has no clue how he found her. When she approaches him, without Pierre noticing, he explains that he has finally found her. He believes that she's taking her time to break up with her current boyfriend, and then they will officially be married. Isabel needs to find a solution to her problem. She lies to Jean that she needs some time to break up with Pierre, and that he should keep his distance. Jean wants to go to Pierre to introduce himself, and force Isabel to break up with him anyway. Isabel pleads with him not to do that and to leave. Thankfully for her, he does. That isn't the last time she will see him, though. Later that same week, he finds her dentist's office and shows up unannounced. Isabel blows a gasket when she sees him again. She quickly pretends he's just another patient, so Pierre doesn't get suspicious. In her office, he once again says that he's there to help her break up with her boyfriend. When he starts talking out loud, she applies anesthesia all over his face until he quiets down. Pierre hears the yells, and Isabel reassures him everything is fine. Poor Jean has his face paralyzed. Isabel doesn't hesitate to inform him that she has never liked him, and that they can't be together. He's sad and starts whimpering, which makes her feel bad. She realizes that he genuinely likes her, and that she's breaking his heart. Jean leaves with his face all messed up, and Isabel breathes in relief. After she finally gets rid of Jean, she goes to the city hall to register her marriage. There she has a not-so-pleasant surprise. Jean registered their marriage, and she needs to get divorced as soon as possible. Isabel wants to cry with frustration and anger. All that she ever wanted was to get married to the man she loves and live happily ever after. Now, she has to go after the random guy she married and divorce him. With Corrine's help, she finds a lawyer, and he explains that Jean's brother works at the city hall, and he registered the marriage without needing her signature. Not only that, but by the village traditions, she has the right of receiving three goats and some gold. 
The lawyer and Corrine can barely keep their laughter at hearing her disgrace. Isabel starts her quest of finding Jean. She discovers he went back to Moscow, and now she needs to find an excuse to go after him again. Corrine and her friends help her lie. She packs her bags and goes straight to Moscow. She plans to bother Jean so much that he begs for a divorce. She finds him at a bakery and introduces herself to his friend as his wife. Jean is confused and lost as to why she's there. She had been clear that she didn't want to see him painted in gold. He questions her motives, and she explains that she was in a bad place back then. Now she's more than ready to move on with their relationship. She lies that she broke up with Pierre, and Jean finally falls for her act again. They arrive at his apartment, and she thinks it's a dump. It's nothing like her place. Before they enter, he grabs her bridal style. The apartment is decorated with objects that he gathered all over his trips. He's very proud of what he amassed over the years. It's time for Isabel to put her plan into action. She makes a face of disgust and complains that the apartment is hideous. Her callous words hurt Jean, but as an easygoing guy, so he offers for her to decorate the place now that she'll be residing there. He tries kissing her, but she quickly dodges him, saying that he has bad breath. Jean runs to the bathroom to brush his teeth and leaves her alone in the living room. Isabel takes the opportunity to snoop, and she's not impressed by what she sees. He has a bunch of strange puppets on his desk that she mistakes for rats, but he explains they are the characters of his book. On his shelves, there's even a picture of the two of them in Kenya. Isabel, driven by a vindictive feeling, pushes Jean's shelf on the ground. Many of his precious objects break in the process. She pretends it was by mistake, that she was only clumsy. Jean is shocked and saddened, but of course, he never blames her. He thinks she's being honest when she apologizes. Later, they go sightseeing in Moscow, and things get worse for Jean. He calls her a nickname and she slaps him, lying that it's a tradition she has with her sister. Whenever he calls her by a cute name, she'll slap him. He's stunned again, but she quickly laughs it out, and he relaxes. When they go back to his apartment, Isabel is mean to Jean again. She purposefully throws his shampoo away, so when he asks for hers, she gives him shaving lotion. She knows his hair is important to him, because he admitted to paying a lot of money to get an implant done. When he comes out of the bathroom, he's mostly bald, with a few patches of hair here and there. Isabel laughs out loud at his disgrace, and he freaks out. That same evening, there's an important gala that Jean has to attend, and he's bald. He has to wear a Russian hat to hide it, but it makes him stand out in the crowd. Isabel looks amazing in a long red dress. As they walk through the party, Jean shows her the people he knows, including his rivals. To antagonize him, she flirts with them. They approach the French minister, and Jean introduces Isabel to him and his wife. Isabel, with a serious expression, explains that she met Jean at her work, and that he changed her life. She not so subtly implies she's a courtesan, which makes Jean absolutely shocked. He defends himself, saying that it's a lie, and Isabel laughs again, agreeing. Things are tense after that, with Jean's credibility put into check. After talking to the couple, they go to the lounge. Jean is invited to dance a traditional Russian dance, and he grudgingly leaves. Isabel watches him dancing with a bored expression, finding him a fool. Not realizing that his recorder was left at the table and it was on, she calls Karine to complain about him. She tells her sister that he's ridiculous, and he will never file for a divorce. She's tired of pretending that she likes him, as if a woman of her caliber ever would. Isabel is very mean and hurtful. Later on, when they are already back in the house, Jean ends up hearing her conversation with Corrine. He can't believe she's so mean and despises him so much. It breaks his heart that she was playing with him like that. He knows he's not the most handsome or successful of men, but he genuinely cares for her. He only wants to make her happy. He's destroyed at hearing the truth. Isabel hates him and finds him an idiot. It's more than he can take. The following day, Jean is quiet and morose. They go have breakfast, and Isabel pretends she has an imaginary friend, to mess with Jean even more. Now that he knows what her deal is, he goes along with her act. He introduces himself to the imaginary friend, and says that he is an idiot, because he was biting off more than he can chew with a woman like her. He's ugly and annoying. At this point, Isabel is embarrassed and ashamed of her behavior. When he throws the signed divorce papers in her face, she understands that he figured it out. Jean quickly leaves her there before she can say anything. She watches as he leaves, looking defeated, and feels a pang in her heart. She knows her actions were wrong. At some point, she got so bitter and angry that she took it all out on Jean. He's innocent in her scheme, and she hurt him. Feeling utterly ashamed, she runs after him to apologize. She explains what happened, and her reasoning. It's nonsense for Jean, but as always, he accepts her apology. She asks him to give her another chance, and he agrees. They go sightseeing as friends. Jean knows everything about Moscow, and Isabel listens to him speak without being annoyed. They go to a fair, and she buys him a hat to cover his head. Isabel surprisingly has a lot of fun with him. Without her prejudice and bitterness, she finds out that Jean is nice and smart. He has already traveled to many places in the world, something that she wishes she could do. Different from her, Jean enjoys his life, even if it's a simple life. He doesn't need luxury to be happy. Isabel is having so much fun that she forgets it's the anniversary of her father's passing. It's the first time she's not sad and depressed during that period. When she confides in Jean that her father promised to take her to the moon one day, 
He has a brilliant idea. They get into a military airplane to feel what it's like to be with no gravity. At first, Isabel is scared, but then she has lots of fun. Never in a million years did she imagine she could do something like that. It warms her heart that Jean, after everything she did to him, still did something so nice for her. After that, they go to a bar and get drunk. On their way back to his apartment, they play in the snow and laugh until their bell is hurt. Isabel is exhilarated. She has never felt so free in her life. As she stares at Jean up close, with her adrenaline still high and her brain foggy because of the alcohol, she ends up kissing him. The following day, she leaves to go back to France. They are both sad that she has to go. It's a bittersweet feeling for Isabel. Now, with the divorce papers, she can finally get married to Pierre as she wanted to. She's confused and even heartbroken to leave Jean. He's not better. When Isabel sees Pierre again, she's not so sure that she wants to marry him anymore. She had so much fun with Jean that she's disappointed to go back to her routine again. The next day, though, much to her surprise, Jean shows up at her house. She forgot the divorce papers. Pierre sees him and wonders who he is. Instead of throwing her under the bus, Jean lies that he's a cousin from Canada and starts talking nonsense. Pierre thinks he's a weirdo, but Isabelle is besotted. They go back to their routine. During their weekly bowling, Isabelle has an epiphany. She's tired of always doing the same thing. She wants more in life than a boring lifestyle where every day is the same. She loves Pierre, but she knows he won't understand her. On a whim, she informs him that she can't get married to him. They would live a boring, vanilla life, and that's not what she wants anymore. She wants a life full of surprises, fun, and adventures. Months later, Isabelle is depressed and lonely. She broke up with Pierre, but she couldn't get a hold of Jean. He disappeared after the last time they saw each other. Her mother thinks she was stupid for losing Pierre, but she doesn't understand her feelings. Isabelle is in the old treehouse that her father built for her and Corinne. Her stepfather, who she sees as a second father, goes after her. He knows she's sad about the situation with Pierre and Jean. He believes Isabel should go after what makes her happy, even if it's not conventional and expected. She lived years of her life with a conventional man, and it didn't work out. Isabel is touched by his insight, and instead of being morose, she feels hopeful. After a long time, she finally finds out where Jean is. He's living in England and working as a tourist guide. Isabel goes after him and sees him wearing the hat she bought him. Instead of talking to him right away, she decides to give him a surprise. It's what he deserves, after all he has been through. The next day, after his tour at a museum, Isabel shows up. She confesses her love to him and proposes, but he doesn't think it's a good idea. He's afraid that she's messing with him again. Isabel is determined to show him that she is serious. She hired a group of dancers to dance the traditional Russian dance, and even invited some people from the Kenyan tribe to help her out. The highlight of her surprise is when the characters of his book appear, dancing. She wins him at that moment. After the spectacle, Jean accepts her proposal. According to Isabel's family, they are traveling all over the world as a happily married couple. Corinne's boss thinks the story is not real, but then Pierre shows up. He's not with Isabel anymore, but he's still part of the family. He holds no grudges for Isabel or Jean. Corinne's boss is instantly attracted to him, and Pierre likes her too. The movie ends with Pierre having his second chance at love with Corinne's crazy boss. Isabel and Jean don't show up again, because they are having too much fun living their lives to the fullest.